all right, I did not want to do this video. I didn't. And I'm going to tell you why I didn't want to do this video because it's, it's, if it's not done correctly, um, as far as YouTube and analytics and metadata and all that and, and search optimization wise, it can be a big waste of time. Have you ever looked at your fish tank and thought to yourself, mm. have you ever thought to yourself, I want something different. I want something unique. I don't want the same old fish that everybody else has. So you start going down the list of exotic fish and you think to yourself, discus been done. Um, oh, 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 I know. Fancy betas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, beta sororities. Ooh, I could be the pleco guy or I could be the Cory guy. They all been done. Nano fish, all been done. But you're looking for something unique. I think I got the fish that you might be interested in. I got this tank. I've showed it a couple times. I think in one of my last videos, I mentioned it. And I can tell you this, every time I've showed, it's over there. So you're gonna see me keep looking over there to get me, to give me inspiration for something to tell you guys. But every time I've, I've shown that tank, people have oohed and ah over it. And there's, and there's a good reason why. The fish are striking. The fish are uncommon. And I'm gonna get into the reasons why they're not that big in a hobby. I, at least as, I'll give you the reasons why they're not as big as most people think they should be um, in a little bit. But the fish, the fish that I'm talking about are Lake Tanganyika African cichlids. Before you hear the word African cichlids and be like, so what? You know what I mean? I know a lot of people that got peacocks and da da da. These aren't the same. Not by a mile. They are nowhere close to the same type of fish as the peacocks and mambunas and predator haps. They are an African cichlid. They do come from one of the um, big um, three, big three, the, the Victoria, Tanganyika, um, What's the other one? Malawi. Malawi. But they're they're the way you keep them is completely different. In some cases it might be a little bit harder. And in other cases it's 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 simpler. So let's get into this. Let's get into this. Most of the time when you think about Lake Tanganyika cichlids, you think about two specifically. You think about the big old what the heck are they called? Uh stop. Frontosis, frontosis. You think about the frontosis. Hold up, let, let me interrupt the video just for a little bit, real fast. Um, first of all, thank you for showing up. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned something. Watch the complete video. And if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting the like button, the subscribe button, notification bell, so that you can be notified when I put stuff out. Um, that that little like, the little like thing, the little that likey like. Uh, it's a small gesture on your part, but it's huge for my channel. And as far as subscribing goes, I got a lot of old content that I know you'll like. Uh, stuff that when I was a lot <laughs> rawer um, and a little bit more wild, um, you you might find interesting, comical, um, and and educational. I got more stuff coming out, so uh, please support. And um, I'm I'm happy to have you in the Aquafunk family. So back to the show. So they get big. We're not talking about the front hoses, even though they're in the same family. They're just a big one. Um, and you think about the little shell dwellers, the the multi the multi multi something something or others, the little shell dwellers. Um, and those are the two that a lot of people think about. But in no actuality, there is thousands. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of different Lake Tanganyika um, fish that are not the big monster, the big, the big boys, but they're the smaller types that you can get, and they all are striking. They all have different ways of living, cohabitating, and they can all live together under the right circumstances, which is not hard to do. Um, you got your shell dwellers, which would be your your you know your little ocelotuses and your multis and and all these that that, that they actually um, spawn and and live in, within shells. 
seashells of snails and stuff like that and they stay at the bottom and then you have you know you like your mid range mid range rock dwellers um that they they kind of live in the rocks you know in crevices and stuff like that and then you have you know the mid the mid swimmers that they sw they swim in opens and stuff like that which this particular tank is that's something i'm sorely lacking um is fish that swim along the middle of the column because it's just it's just that space is so empty but these fish the reason why you don't see a lot of them is because they grow extremely slow okay so as far as a breed is concerned a breeder um when you're breeding fish for profit the goal is is to make as much profit in as little amount of time as possible these fish are not good for that. if you plan on being a a a a tang breeder and trying to make it rich good luck um i don't really see that happening in most cases for for a lot of people um you might be able to get your name out there to be the go-to guy where you get the majority of the sales in the country you know coming to you and even then um but they grow really really slow so because they grow slow you have to a breeder would have to put more time effort and money into getting them to a sellable size so where a lot of breeder breeders I don't, why am i somebody made a comment somebody made it my good friend riley fish keep in jamaica said that um um i'm tripping over my tongue <laughs> And he's the only one to notice it, but he's known me from the beginning. And, and um, back when I first started, I used to be quicker, you know, talk a lot faster. Um, I didn't I didn't normally fumble over my words, but um, I guess as time went on, my blades gotten a little dull, but it's still sharp as a uh, sharp as something. <laughs> yeah, I might be missing a step, but I'm still on top. What was I talking about? Yeah, as far as a breeder's concerned, um, the goal is to make as much money as a little bit. Better. I said that. Da, 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 da. Where other breeders, for instance, Angel. When I bred Angels, my turnaround from spawn to selling, selling size to where I could sell them was three months. Okay. Um, whereas these guys, you might, you might be talking about a year because they only grow about. Three quarters of an inch of a year, a year, um, and no, nobody wants some itty bitty. They, they they only want them at about an inch because, you know, the, the price tag that comes along with them because of the time is kind of substantial. Um, for instance, the calvis and the um, uh, the compressorceps, which are some of, you know, they're like uh, automatic. If you get these, you gotta, you know, if you get tang tanks, you gotta have a calvis or a compressorcep. Um, they're in the $50 range, 30 to $50 range. And those are for ones that are like an inch. So you don't see them a lot at the pet stores because now you have, as a pet store owner, you have to explain to people why this one inch fish, why they should buy this one inch fish for $50 or, or they can buy multiple fish for the same price. So, so pet stores really don't like to carry them because of that. There's a couple of them that really stand out where people are like Goo Goo Gagano, for instance, the Frontosas and the Shell Dwellers. Of course, everybody wants Shell Dwellers. You have a tank and they live in the shells and it's so cute. And plus, they're not very, um, for the most part, they don't really kill their babies. So um, you can kind of, those are kind of easy sells for people. But all the other ones, it's a little difficult trying to convince people that they should get it. So that's why you don't see them a lot in the hobby. Pet stores are afraid to carry them because they're afraid of how long they're gonna have these fish before somebody buys them and that pet stores are putting money into it. Um, and breeders don't really, it's not really a big money making fish to, to, to breed. So you don't see them a lot in the hobby. Because you don't see them a lot in the hobby, you may not even know they exist. In fact, the reason I didn't wanna make this video is because I've made videos about tangs that i've had like four years ago you know what i mean 
And they kind of just fell on their face. And the reason why is because they don't, they're not that sought after. Not because they're not beautiful, not because they're not incredible, not because they're not interesting. It's because they're not on the market. So why would somebody look for a fish that they're probably not going to be able to get? So nobody really looks them up. And it saying that, please like this video, watch it to the end, leave a comment, share this video. All right. On your Facebook or whatever. Let people know about this fish um, because this video really ain't going to do a whole lot because of the subject matter. You know what I mean? The algorithm isn't going to isn't going to notice that a lot of people are um, looking for this type of content. Because it is an obscure type of fish. You know, it's kind of one of the fish in the shadows. But I will tell you this, though, about this fish. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're interested in a fish that not everybody has, that does take a level of sophistication in fish keeping, that's what you're looking for, right? You're bored with the same old, same old. This is a fish for you. It's an African cichlid. Um, its feeding is different than... Um, new world cichlids okay so first of all africa is considered old world the americas south central north new world so whenever you hear when someone say old world cichlid they're talking about africa new world cichlid they're talking about you know um the americas you don't feed them heavy protein these guys need a um a good amount of veggie matters or they can get bloat um the colors are striking if, if you if, after this video google lake tanganyika cichlids and you're gonna see what i'm talking about their body shapes also regular african cichlids all have pretty much the same body shape whereas these guys they all differ um water now okay i don't really have a problem with keeping 100 pristine water conditions but if you were to look them up, you would see where people are really funny about Lake Tanganyika water um, conditions because they're expensive, right? So they go a little overboard, which I understand completely with the water parameters. In fact, um, I'm going to put a link to a channel um, and I believe it's called the Herd Wave. I watch, I watch her whenever I can. Right now, it's really the only YouTube tuber that's um doing strictly lake tanganyika fish and i i i i appreciate everything she does i love what she does i don't think she's getting enough credit as far as subscribers go because of her content matter ain't a whole lot of people out there looking for lake tanganyika fish so go over there show support sub up learn some stuff about some fish that most people don't have um these african cichlids can live with plants i don't have mine with live plants just because i don't feel like I, I leave my lights off a lot that's simple i leave my lights off a lot um because i've been working a lot of hours up to like 70 hours um lately and i don't i don't really want to do a whole lot of algae scraping um so i leave my lights off a lot and it's probably gonna be that way for a minute unfortunately so um I went with the fake plants. And plus, I wanted to just prove a point. You know, just live plants suck. Um, you know, I poke bears like that. So, but the rock work, the decor is different too. A lot of people will just throw sand in the African sand. These guys, you need a lot of rock because they need those crevices. So, having large rocks, shells is encouraged. Okay, you can put a lot more in there if they have places to go. Mind you, I said they grow slowly. They do. Anywhere from half an inch to an inch a year. A lot of them do not grow that big at all. At all. So when you take in the, com the, 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 the when you combine the fact that they don't grow that big that fast, you know, with the fact that you may not have a lot of room to continue buying bigger, 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 bigger tanks as your fish grow. Like if you had an Oscar, you had a little 20 gallon, you're like, oh my God, and you know, too much, you need a bigger tank, another too much, you need even bigger. These guys could live in a 20 long for a very long time before you have to upgrade. All right. Um, 
and like i said you got the plants and all that but but if you was looking for a type of fish that um not everybody has it's gonna take a little bit more um you know learning on your part um to keep them you know something different you know small if you were looking for small fish these are the ones you need to be looking at dun, dun, dun.